What is the problem when it comes to socially responsible business conduct? Let me give you some quick examples. 1970s in Chile, foreign company collaborates with the CIA to overthrow a president that was democratically elected. 1980s in India, factory explodes, releasing deadly chemicals that kill 8,000 people and injure hundreds of thousands. 1990s, Nigeria, big oil company stands by as the military dictatorship executes community leaders that protest the devastation brought by oil. 2000, Ivory Coast, children are harvesting cocoa on plantations and that goes in the chocolate that we eat worldwide. 2013, garment factory, building is collapsing and kills more than 1,000 people. Who is responsible for this? Is it the governments where the people live? Is it the company that endangers its workers and local communities? Is it the foreign companies that source and commercialize these products that are tainted by human rights abuses? Is it the state where these foreign companies is headquartered? Is it you and me, the consumers? Is it the investors? Is it the market system? So you are going to ask me about progress. Are we making progress? If I tell you this is a generational struggle, you are going to raise and walk out. So I think I need a different way of responding this. So let me refer you to the, the glass. Is it half full or half empty? I will try to prove both of these points of views. So if you think that the glass is half empty when it comes to irresponsible business conduct, just look at the above list, what I just described. It's a long list and it shows no sign of abetting. Uh, further, dig a bit deeper in any global industry and you will for sure get a story of abuse involving big brands, global brands. It's a guaranteed story. You will ask me, can victims in developing countries make their case in foreign courts, in these foreign courts of industrialized states? And I will say it's very, very difficult. It's an uphill battle. You will ask me, are there laws in developed countries that make it obligatory for their companies to imp implement safeguards throughout their value chains? Are these laws backed by stiff fines? And I will tell you, there are hardly any laws like this. There is one exception from France, 2017, unique case in the world. So the French adopted uh, a law that requires French companies operating globally to implement vigilance plans. I should say that the recently elected French president uh, Macron was against this law when he was a minister. Uh, should I continue? Do we have a treaty international treaty on the issue of corporate accountability. We don't. We just have the UN guiding principles on business and human rights from 2011. It's not a legally binding instrument. It doesn't create legal obligations for states or for companies. Do we have an international court or an arbitration tribunal that can hear human rights claims against businesses? We don't. And if you read what the United Nations says, the space for dissent, the, 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 the space for those working to defend human rights is shrinking in the last 10 years. So that was the half empty glass. Let's look at the half full glass. We have new laws actually in developed countries. There are transparency laws, laws that require companies to tell us, tell you and me, what they are doing about human rights and the environment. So these are laws in developed states. They cover topics like anti-slavery, conflict minerals, so minerals that are used in this laptop source from Congo or other conflict areas. Laws about the taxes that companies pay, what happens to that money. You have an EU law that uh, requires company to, companies to report on their social responsibility performance as well as the, the gender percentages of workers in their companies. None of these laws existed before 2010. They are all new since 2010. 
some will say that these laws are weak, however, they are not very demanding from companies and there are no big fines attached. More on the half full story. We have new standards, we have new tools, we have new coalitions of like-minded people. We have evidence from leading companies that there is place for social responsibility. It can be done, it is feasible. 10, 50 years ago, hardly any of this existed, couldn't find it, or they were just very rudimentary standards and tools. Some CSR initiatives are maturing, the voluntary principles for security and human rights, the extractive in industry transparency initiative, both from the extractive sector. They have progressed significantly in very difficult environments, dealing with issues like bribery and security around corporate operations. What is the message that companies operating globally hear these days from company law? from company lawyers. You have to look at what the OECD is saying in its 2015 principles of corporate governance. Look what the 2006 British company law says. Look at the 2014 EU law, a directive that was passed. The message from company law is very clear for companies. This is a complex global market where you have to take into account the interest of your stakeholders and where you have to pursue the long-term interest of your company, the long-term success of the company. Finally, look at partnerships, private-public partnerships. The UN lists right now on its, on its website 2,370 partnerships regarding the Sustainable Development Goals. 15 years ago, when Kofi Annan went to Davos, to the World uh, Economic Forum, some people in the UN uh, so that this was a pact with the devil because he proposed a global compact to companies to protect human rights, labor rights, the environment, and then anti-corruption. So there have been changes. Uh, the conclusions, you will ask me about the half full, half empty glass. Are we moving towards accountability? Is uh, CSR just rhetoric, progress or not? So I think it depends very much what you expect and how you measure it. You get ample evidence for both sides that we are making actually progress or that much is still the same and not much has changed. So these transparency laws that I mentioned to you as an example of governments acting, do they work? When you read the research from academics, they say that these laws really don't, they don't change corporate behavior. When you hear activists, they say that these laws are game changers. The expectations are very high. But one thing is quite clear, is that how users digest this information, how user, users act on this information will be decisive. Otherwise, these laws will fall completely flat and they will not drive change for human rights. I would conclude with the idea that there is power in numbers and there is power in simple ideas. This is the thinking behind the SDGs. In business and human rights in CSR, we see the emergence of key performance indicators, of benchmarking of companies based on their human rights performance, aided by transparency laws. That reduces actually the hiding space for determined corporate laggards and it makes it sli slightly and progressively harder for them to get away with it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dario Maris. Um, okay. Yes. Good thing I'm curious. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask you, in terms of consumer power, uh, Lund was the, was had the, the got the diploma of being the second fair trade city in Sweden in 2007, I think it was. How important is it for uh, cities to commit, like with this, for this is uh, procu procurement, for instance, and also for customers, the labeling, the s certifications of fair trade, certifications for fair flowers, fair plants, etc. How important is this? To move on. Yes, consumers have power. The previous speaker said that we vote with our forks. Uh, we vote with our wallets mm -hmm. as well when, you, when we go and shop. 
I think that the consumer power uh, as individuals, it's slightly overestimated. Mm -hmm. It's one factor that can drive change, but it's far from being that significant market pool that some people are expecting. When it comes to cities, to states, to local authorities, uh, this is an untapped source of leverage. It's only very recently that governments and local authorities uh, decide to use public procurement mm -hmm. uh, to promote, let's say, human rights or labor rights globally. Uh, it's just starting right now. And I think that can make much more of a difference. It's much more concentrated power. Mm -hmm. And together, if the authorities and the individual consumers send this signal, I think it's changing the entire discourse. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't change the market calculations directly, but there is a totally different uh, a discourse out there. And I think that's transformational. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Varumaras. Thank, Thank you. you.